Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Are you people are new over here? Then a warm welcome to my YouTube channel. We have finally reached 1k subscribers. Thanks to everyone who already subscribed my channel and those who still haven't, please hit subscribe and keep watching the videos. So, in the previous video, we have discussed the species and life cycle of malaria. Together with, we also have talked about the symptoms and preventive measure of it. So, here in this video, we will be talking about the remaining part of malaria. Talking about the life cycle of Plasmodium, we have already discussed the three phases which complete the stage of life cycle. First is Cyzogony. It is a sexual reproduction by multiple fusion which takes place in two cells. One is liver and another is RBC. If it takes place in liver, we call it hepatic cyzogony. And if it takes place in RBC, then we call it erythrolytic or hemolytic cyzogony. This is the first stage where multiplication takes place. And the second stage is called gamagony. The formation of gamers. The first stage cyzogony is asexual where is gamagony is sexual phase. Gamagony is described in two phases. First is gametocytogenesis. It occurs in the bloodstream of the vertebrate host. And the second one is gametogenesis. It takes place in the gut of mosquito. And the third stage is sporogony, the formation of spores. It is also a sexual reproduction which occurs on the outer wall of the meat gut. These are the things which we were already talked about in the previous video. So now we will be talking about the treatment of malaria. If somebody suffers malaria, then how it treated? Let's talk about that. Basically, there are two approaches of treatment. One is symptom targeted and second is pathogen targeted. So firstly, we are going to take care of symptoms. So here we use antipyretic drugs. We have already discussed about the reason for rise in temperature that is hemozoin, which is a pyrozine of fever generating substance. So, we use antipyretic drug, that means which is going to break down the effect of hemozoin. And one very common drug which is taken is crozine, which is an antipyretic drug, but it doesn't kill the pathogen. To kill the pathogen, there are different types of drug. Number one, which is very common and important drug is quinine, which is obtained from the bark of cinchona tree. It is very old drug. And the number two and very effective drug is daraprim. It kills the pathogen in the liver cell as well as RBC. Unless and until we kill the parasite, it will multiply there and cytogenic go on and on. Whenever RBC rupture, hemozoin will be released and frequently fever will be caused. Unless we kill the pathogen, we will be not able to kill the malaria. So, Daraprim is very effective drug for malaria. And the most latest and recent anti-malarial drug is Mifloquine. So here, together with the previous video, we have discussed the life cycle of Plasmodia, the infective stage and the different species of Plasmodium, including the symptoms, prophylaxis and treatments. So now, we will be discussing the diagnostic test of malaria. The diagnostic test of malaria can be divided into different parts and they are Parasitic diagnosis, serodiagnosis, molecular diagnosis, and culture. 
Parasitic diagnosis can be done either by doing peripheral smear examination or fluorescein microscopic examination or quantitative buffy coat. Peripheral smear examination is a simple technique and is considered as gold standard test for diagnosis of malaria. Blood is the specimen of choice. It should be collected before starting the treatment. We can collect the peripheral blood either by pricking earlobe or finger in case of adult and toe in heel in case of infant. The area should be cleaned with alcohol and allowed to dry and with the help of lancet, blood is pricked from finger. The finger should not be squeezed while collecting blood. This will release the tissue fluid which will make blood diluted. For smear examination, we use EDTA anticoagulant blood. And the most important thing if we are using EDTA anticoagulant blood, then we should do the smear within one hour of collection. If we do delay more than one hour, the parasitic morphology may be altered. And the next thing is, in the cases of post-mortem, we make smear from cerebral gray matter. So, let's talk about the timing of collection. We can collect the specimen at any time for Plasmodium vivax, Plasmodium malaria and Plasmodium oval infection. Whereas, for Plasmodium falciparum, we have to collect blood during the febrile paroxysms. Blood is made into two smears. One is thick smear and another is thin smear. Both the thick and thin smear can be made on same slide or it can also be done in different slide. A thick smear is prepared by taking two to three small drops of blood and spreading it over an area of two centimeter. Thickness should be such that we should be able to read newsprint. It is air dried and dehemoglobinized by dipping in distilled water for 10 minutes. So now let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of thick smear. In thick smear, we can detect the parasites as low as 5 to 10 per microliter of blood. And also we can do quantitation of parasitemia by counting the parasites. We can also demonstrate the malarial pigment. And the disadvantage of thick smear is no species can be identification. We cannot identify the species on thick smears. So now let's talk about the preparation of thin smear. Thin smear is prepared by taking small drop of blood and spreading over the slide using the edge of an another slide. The film is air dried and it is fixed with the alcohol. A good thin film is thick at one end and thin at another end. We should consist of a single layer of RBCs and there should be thin feathered end at least 2 cm long and here the film always should be in central area with free margins. So now let's talk about the advantages of thin smear. In thin smear we can detect parasites up to 200 parasites per microliter of blood. And here in thin smear we can identify the species also. This advantage of thin smear is as there we are observing very less amount of blood so there is a chance of missing parasites. And these all are about the thick and thin smears. Once the thick and thin smear are prepared, we should stain it with Romanovsky stain. Here, two types of stains are available. The one is stained with both fixative and reagent and the two is stained with only reagent. Right stains and Leishman stains contain 
both fixative and reagent whereas jimsa stain field stain just one thing and what are jsb stain contain only reagent so in this video we have talked all the detail of malaria today we discuss the remaining part of life cycle of plasmodium and we talked about the different drugs for the treatment of malaria we also have discussed the diagnostic test of malaria including the smears and different stains at last I want to ask you how did you feel after watching my video please comment me if you have any further queries regarding this topic thank you so much for watching